Mic check, one, two. Mic check, 34, 35. Hello, hello. Guys, what's going on? Welcome to hashtag TNT JoFi Tech News. Sorry, I got to take these off. Tech News that Jerome Ortega finds interesting. I am your host, Jerome Ortega. This is episode um, something. <laughs> Uh, a number that I need to keep count of. Uh, this is also day something in quarantine. Uh, that number I do not care for because this just isn't over yet. So anyway, guys, how's it going? Welcome. Welcome. Appreciate you guys stopping by. Let me go through chat. Let me say hi to everyone. Levin was first in here. What's up, fam? Time to get the stream going. Yeah, I apologize. I'm a little late today. I, um, I don't know if you want to hear my excuses, but, uh, you know, I was working this morning. Uh, I went to work out and then I was doing laundry and yeah, anyway, that's about it. That's, that's, I was up until actually, so last night I was up until five, I think five 30 in the morning working. Uh, I was, yeah, I was losing my mind. <laughs> so, uh, I woke up late, had a late start to work out, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm all caught up now. So uh, anyway, appreciate you guys stopping by. Um, Tim Schumann is in here as well. Jerome, what up? What up, Tim? How's it going, man? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Actually, uh, Tim, if you're still in here, I, I didn't know if you just came in to come in and say hi, but uh, I'm, I'm working on an episode of Breakfast today. So hopefully I'll have that out today. It's been like over a week since I posted there and I need to uh, catch up. Anyway, Tim, welcome. Welcome to the stream. Nice to see you, man. Uh, Rasiru? Oh, please, uh, Rosiro, please uh, correct me on the pronunciation. Rosiro uh, Batuata. Uh, hey, bro, what's up? What's up, Rosiro? Rosiro. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, what's going on, man? Welcome to the stream. Nice to see you. I don't, I don't know if I've seen you in here before. I'm not really sure. Um, Team Varai is in here. Hi, everyone. Hope you're all doing great. I think, I think I'm doing great. How are you, Team Varai? How's it going? How are you feeling? Uh, what's going on? Uh, Ruben is in here. What's up, Jerome? Stream still listening in while at work. Well, uh, Ruben, thank you for joining. Thank you for participating, even if it's just uh, listening in. Appreciate you stopping by. Uh, Tim is saying school's kicking my ass. I, I can only imagine. I can only imagine the the. So for people who don't know, Tim is uh, in one of those coding boot camps. So uh, he he's pretty busy when it when it comes to uh, school. I couldn't do it. It's not for me. Uh, but yeah, other channel is growing, man. Yeah, I I just noticed uh, I hit a thousand subscribers on my other channel, which is great. Um, I do need to start posting in there, though. Hopefully, I'll have a video out today. Uh, Swanye West is in here. What up, y'all? What up, Swanye? What's going on, man? How you doing? Uh, Tim says I got to run to lunch with a girlfriend, but hit me up on Discord when you have time. I will do that. Yeah, actually, I need to to get on Discord. Hope you're getting settled at the new place. I'm. I'm like 90% settled in, maybe 80%. But uh, Tim, thank you for stopping by. We'll talk. We'll talk. Brian is in here as well. What up, everyone? Stuck at work. Have a great stream. Thanks, Brian. I don't know if you're in here to, to hang for a bit, but hopefully you can uh, spend some time in here if, if you can. And Brian with the dollar super chat. So Brian, thank you for the support. Usually I feel like when Brian... Uh, <laughs> When Brian um, sends a super chat this early, that's because he's busy and he needs to run. But Brian, thank you for the support, man. Always appreciate it. Thank you so much. Ted is in here as well. Howdy, folks. What's going on, Ted? How you doing, man? Uh, welcome, welcome. Um, Team Bryce is doing all right. Or doing all right, man. Thanks. Well, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Big House is in here as well. Hey, Jerome Stream. What up, Big House? How's it going, man? Uh, welcome. Nice to see you in here. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and get started. So, oops, sorry about that. So, I... I haven't had a chance to really go through any stories today uh, just because I had a late start this morning and I was working late last night. But uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about stuff I have no idea <laughs> uh, what what is going on with these stories yet. I don't know much about these phones, so we're going to talk about it. But this article from GSM Arena is talking about the Redmi K30 Ultra. So is it just me or is Ultra now the new top end, top end, highest flagship, most premium when it comes to, uh, I guess, giving a moniker for a, a phone model, Ultra. It's not the Max like iPhone, it's the Ultra. The S20 Ultra, the Note 20 Ultra, and now we're talking about the Redmi K30 Ultra and also the Xiaomi 
Mi 10 Ultra. Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra just that that the part where it goes Xiaomi Mi is just very confusing for me. But uh let's let's talk about both of these phones. Um the Redmi K30 Ultra brings 120 hertz screen and a Dimensity 1000 Plus chipset. This Dimensity 1000 Plus chipset, I think, is MediaTek's highest-end chipset. I don't know too much about it. I don't know what it compares to when it comes to the Snapdragon 800 series, but I don't think it's anywhere like close to the 865 Plus, but it's still up there. It's still up there. Maybe it's... I don't know if it's in the same performance area as the 855. There was a chart I had before, but... I, I don't have that handy at the moment. Anyway, let's let's read into this. So you wait 10 years for a Xiaomi Ultra phone and now two come at the same time. Alongside the Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra comes the Redmi K30 Ultra, a MediaTek Dimensity 1000 plus powered alternative to the K30 Pro. So so what is the big difference between a what's the big difference between the Redmi K30 and the Xiaomi Mi 10? Are they similar phones? I I know that they they all operate under what is it BBK I think, but what what separates both of these phones? Or are they the same phone that are just sold in different markets? I I really don't know. That's why I'm asking you guys in chat. Uh, it also doubles the refresh rate of the Pro to 120 hertz and brings faster 33 watt. Uh, wired charging at a more affordable price tag. I have no idea what that price tag is going to be. It is cool to see though that uh, this, what is this, the Redmi? Yeah, the Redmi K30 Ultra. <laughs> I was about to say the Redmi K30 Ultra Pro, but uh, the Redmi K30 uh, Ultra has a pop-up selfie cam, which I always like to see. The rest of the spec sheet is identical to the K30 Pro, uh, meaning a 6.67 inch AMOLED, a 20 megapixel pop-up camera, a quad rear camera with a 64 megapixel rear shooter. Uh, it's accompanied by a 13 megapixel ultra wide, a five megapixel macro uh, sensor and a two megapixel depth helper. MediaTek's flagship Dimensity 1000 plus SOC is the big change here and it's paired with six or eight gigs of RAM, 128 or 256 or 512 gigs of internal storage. So you can get their top end there, 512. The battery, 4,500, uh, the battery is 4,500 milliamp hours and you get the required charger to achieve its maximum 33 watt rate in the box. It's funny to me that there is a note here that says, and you get the required charger to achieve its maximum 33 watt rate in the box. I think it's a little sad that they have to make note of that because some manufacturers, even though the phone is capable of X amount of watt wired charging, they don't supply the required charger to give you that maximum benefit of wired charging, which is sad. Don't, don't go ahead and tout that your phone can do X amount of watt wired charging and not provide the proper charging brick for that. That's, I don't know. That's for me, I feel like that's a company just, I don't know, not, not, uh, being cheap, I guess is a nice way of putting it, but like, don't, don't go and brag about how, how good your wire charging is. And then you don't give people the proper hardware for it. And then instead you're forcing them to, to pay for it. Just, I don't know, not, not cool. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. Uh, the software side is covered by MIUI 12 on top of Android 10. Other notable additions include a stereo speaker setup, which is always nice, and linear vibration motor. What does that mean? What does a linear vibration motor mean? How does that compare to um, haptic feedback for other phones now? Uh, the Redmi K30 Ultra will retail for CNY $2,287. That's so cheap. Uh, in its six or or in its six gigs of RAM, 128 gig uh, internal storage base trim. That is so cheap. Two hundred and eighty-seven dollars, under three hundred dollars. There's also the eight uh, gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of internal storage for three hundred and sixteen dollars, and then twenty-five hundred CNY, which is three hundred and sixty dollars US, will get you eight gigs of internal storage and two hundred and or 
eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of internal storage. If those aren't enough, you can also scoop the eight gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of internal storage for 2,700 CNY, which is under $400, $388 US. Official sales in China start on August 14. International availability is yet to be detailed. So yeah, this MediaTek Dimensity 1000 Plus is, I'm pretty sure is not in the same realm as a Snapdragon 865 or an 865 Plus, and maybe not, not, maybe not even an 855, but it's up there. It's definitely faster, I think, in terms of performance than a Snapdragon 765G, which is what you're going to find in the you know, Pixel 4a 5G or Pixel 5 or the OnePlus Nord or the LG Velvet or whatever other phones have now this 765G, which is, I think, showing up in a lot of phones. But um, it's still a pretty high-performing chipset, I believe, that you can get with 8 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of internal storage for, what is it, under $400? Ridiculous. That's a great price. Um, it's It seems like it seems like the, these companies, or at least Redmi and Xiaomi, they're they're trying to bring bigger, higher end specs at a more affordable price point. And uh, I don't know, does that mean that OnePlus needs to kind of up their game when it comes to pricing? Maybe these are the next companies that are actually going to bring phones that might be universally accept accepted because of their price. But whether or not it comes to the states or you can even get it or if the bans work, I, I have no idea. So we'll continue on, though, because this article from The Verge is talking about how Xiaomi is announcing their Mi 10 Ultra with 120 watt fast charging. So this obviously, the Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra in terms of specs here seems to be already better than the Redmi K30 Ultra when you're comparing fast charging at 120 watts, which is ridiculous, versus 33 watts, um, plus a 120 times ultra zoom camera. Now, I don't know how good that's gonna be. We've already talked about the debacle when it comes to space zoom, 100 times space zoom from the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra, but we'll, we'll get into it. So rumors about Xiaomi's Mi 10 Ultra have been swirling this week. The company has now formally announced the product. Xiaomi revealed key features of its anticipated handset in a press release and a series of tweets. Whatever you can imagine, hashtag Mi 10 Ultra has it. Well, I don't know about that. We'll see. The highlight is that the Ultra supports 120-watt wired fast charging, a 4,500 milliamp-hour battery, the same size as that of the uh, Galaxy S20+. Plus. Xiaomi claims it'll fully juice up in 23 minutes and hit 41% after just five minutes. That That's ridiculous. <laughs> those, are, those are ridiculous numbers right there. The Ultra also sports, also supports 50-watt wireless fast charging. So... The, the the 50 watt wireless the 50 the 50 watt wireless fast charging is probably faster than any wired phones than a lot of people have at this point my Huawei P40 Pro plus charges wired uh, charges has a 40 watt wired fast charging which is already incredibly fast to 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 think that it is capable of 50 watt wireless fast charging is incredible. That's something I would love to try just to see how quickly it can charge your phone. It says here, Xiaomi claims you can get a full charge in 40 minutes going this route. That's crazy. It it makes me think I wouldn't even want to charge wired anymore. Then if I can, if I can just get 50 watts, 40 minutes, I wow. That's ridiculously fast. It really is. So uh, the Ultra also houses an impressive camera array, including a 48 megapixel primary shooter with a 1 over 1.32 inch sensor, a 120 times hybrid zoom camera, and 8K video recording capability. There's also a 20 megapixel ultra wide with a 128 degree field of view and a 12 megapixel portrait camera. I wonder how good this camera really is. The 6.67 inch OLED display also looks to be top notch with a 120 hertz refresh rate. That's the same here for this Redmi, uh, Redmi K30 Ultra. I'm assuming it's probably the same hardware. So it can lead to smoother animations and scrolling, blah, blah, blah. Uh, oh, okay. So it's, it's powered by a Snap 865. Okay, this phone is probably gonna be really expensive. 
So a Snapdragon 865, the same chipset that's in many of the fastest Android phones on the market, including the S20 and S20 Ultra. There you go. The Mi 10 Ultra will be available in mainland China on August 16th. It'll start at 5,300 uh Yuan. Am I saying that right? Around $760. So yeah, it's on the higher end, but that is so cheap. For the specs that you get, a Snap 865, it didn't even talk about RAM, did it? Did I read the RAM on here? But 120 hertz refresh rate, apparently good camera specs. I mean, who knows if it really has good camera specs or not. 120 watt wire charging, 50 watt wireless charging. What, what are, what are the specs when it comes to Ram? I'm curious what else it has. Is it also IP68 dust and water resistant? Um, what are the speakers set up like? Why, why didn't the Verge talk about the rest of this. Can I can I read into these specs here? Is this going to bring me into more stuff? So, this is just Hold on. Give me a second. I'm going to I'm going to pull up the stats on this Mi 10 Ultra, the stats, the specs. Um I'm sure GSM Marina has a good GSM Marina is always good at uh giving you full phone specs. Here we go. So, uh this is the Mi 10 Ultra. So you can get 8 to 16 gigs of RAM. Holy shit. Um, 16 gigs of RAM. Okay. Uh, hold on. Sorry. Let me make this. Okay. So Mi 10 Ultra, 6.67 inch, 120 hertz refresh rate. You can get 128, 256, or 512 gigs of internal storage, 8 to 16 gigs of RAM, a snap, 865, 4,500 milliamp hour battery, 120 hertz, 120 hertz, 120 watt wire charging. Wow. 120 hertz refresh rate, 120 watt wire charging, 50 watt wireless charging. What else does this have? Where are the speakers here? Stereo speakers. There's no three and a half millimeter headphone jack. Under, under display fingerprint reader. I also wonder how good the the cameras are going to be. So it has reverse wireless charging, but look at that. 120 watt wire charging, 100% in 23, 23 minutes, which is the advertised rating for it. But that's still a 4,500 milliamp hour battery. And then 40 minutes for 50 watt of wire charging. And it starts at $760, less than $800 for this phone. I mean, those are those are very impressive specs. I, d I don't really know if this is something we'll ever get to see in the States, but uh, very impressive for sure, definitely. Considering the fact that like I paid $1,300 for my Huawei P40 Pro Plus, the fact that the S20 Ultra cost, what, $1,400, $1,500 or whatever. The Note 20 Ultra is $1,300, right? Or $1,400. I keep forgetting the prices. But I mean, this phone is under 1000 bucks with the specs. If you put those specs in other phones, a lot of those phones will easily start at a thousand. A lot of other phones will easily start at a thousand bucks. So to even have that price point is very impressive, to say the least. Okay. Uh, I think that's all I have when it comes to those phones. I, d I don't know if I'll ever get my hands on something like this, but um, I don't know. If you guys know where you can even get them, please let me know. But uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll go back into uh, chat here and, and we'll discuss. We'll discuss. All right. Okay, let me scroll up here. Um, Swanye says, chilling, dude, trying to stay safe. Glad everyone isn't out effing stuff up anymore. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's still probably not the end of it. Um, you know, here in Chicago, things are crazy. Uh, there's a lot of civil unrest and yeah. So uh, hope you're good at the new crib, bro, and the rest of my Chicago peeps. Well, thank you, Swanye. I appreciate it, man. Uh, stay safe too, man. Um, yeah, no, no, uh, I'm, I'm doing well. So thank you. Thank you, man. Uh, all right. So let me let me go down here. Uh, big House is like, yes, Xiaomi on deck. Yeah, how are you feeling about this, Big House? Of, of all the people who would probably buy one of these phones, I'd imagine that Big House might. Deepak Murthy is in here. Hey, Jerome, what's going on, Deepak? Welcome to the stream. Nice to see you. Uh, Ted says, Ultra is the new pro. Yeah, um, 
it seems like was Samsung the first to use the Ultra moniker, and now Xiaomi's using it. Uh, they have it on their Redmi phone. Who else is going to have it next? Uh, Juan Bagnell. Juan Bagnell, welcome to the stream. Nice to see you, man. I think this is the first time I've seen you in here. Uh, yeah, there you go. Quote, Ultra is the new quote pro. Uh, Rusiru uh, is saying, DxO mark score is out here. It's 130 overall for which phone? Is it for this Mi 10 Ultra? I'm, I'm assuming it's not for the K30 Ultra, but for the Mi, Mi, Mi 10 Ultra? Crazy, man. Uh I mean, I'm not, I'm not like, so it's weird for me, right? I, I, I look at DxO Mark and I'm like, okay, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but it isn't for me. It's not my baseline. Usually I, I would like to test the phones myself and really see where it goes, but, uh, it's a good baseline to see. Uh, so what is 130? Where, where is it? Where does that lie at 130? Is that higher or lower than what, what's, what's the top? What's the top score right now for DxO Mark? Just curious. Uh, Swanye says, I mean, what's up above uh, Ultra? Mega? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what's above Ultra. Is Ultra is Ultra the highest? I don't think, I think Ultra would be higher than Mega, at least in my terms. <laughs> okay, so let me, let me go down here. Um, so Six is in here. Six is on Twitch. What's going on, Six? Uh, hello. Uh, seems good. What seems good? Or is that supposed to be an emoji? I, I have no idea. Uh, Big House says here, processor Mi 10 has a Snapdragon 865 and the K30 Ultra has a MediaTek. Yeah. Um, I wonder, so is Redmi, is Redmi the cheaper version? And then Xiaomi is the higher end? Is that how that works? There's just so many, so many of them that I, I can't even keep up anymore. Swanee says, I dig the pop-up camera, more screen real estate. So that's that's how I feel about it too. If, if it was up to me, I would just have all phones use pop-up um, selfie cameras. You know, I, I still don't know the mechanical like longevity or whatever on it, but I would rather have that than a notch or a hole punch or a punch hole or a water drop, teardrop. What else do they call them? Did I say notch already? I already said notch. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Swanye says, yo, that brown bulls fitted hat though. No, it's a snapback though. But thanks, Swanye. Appreciate it. Juan says, uh, Samsung on the Galaxy S30, quote, we removed the charger too because Apple did, <laughs> because Apple did it. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Swanye says, but yeah, I don't get the whole, not including the charger thing Apple and Samsung is trying to do. They'll do anything to get an extra buck out of us. Whack. Uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've ranted about this so many times. Um, I'm not gonna rant about it today. <laughs> I've already done it enough. I already did it earlier. <laughs> okay, so let me scroll down here. Sorry guys, I'm not gonna be able to get to, to all the chat here. Um, oh, Big House says, where's Grant? <laughs> I'm sure he'll love this for sure. Uh, I'd wait, I'd wait. How's it going, man? Juan is here, respect. Yeah, there you go, there you go. Um, Okay, so let me see here. Uh, Juan says, I just looked up the Dimensity benches. The 1000 plus seems to land pretty close to the Snapdragon 855 Geekbench scores, slightly ahead. Not bad. No, that's not bad at all. And as, especially for the price, for a price of 760 or whatever it is, I mean, even if that's just the starting price, that's that's a great that's a great price to put it at um, with those performance specs. I, I can't complain at all. I can't complain. Um, Oddweight says, I heard MediaTek has modem issues. So in terms of like reception, cell reception, uh, I, I have no idea. I, I know that people have talked about MediaTek as well when it comes to not, not cell reception, but updates, updating their chipsets or having support for it. I, I'm, I've never owned a phone with the MediaTek before, so I really don't know. Um, I really don't know how well they perform and uh, how how important that support is when it comes to a company. Like I'm not 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 that I'm saying companies shouldn't support their products because they definitely should for as long as they can. I just, yeah, I don't I don't know. You know, you know, <laughs> I'm sitting here. I'm just like, God, how many times have I said I don't know? I don't know. Um, okay. So let me, okay. I lost my spot already. Uh, okay. Okay. Let me see here. Um, 
Yeah, Team Verizon says, I wonder how well the Dimensity chips hold up against the competition in the long run. That's that's a that's a fair question for sure. Deepak says, I received the OnePlus Nord today. You did. Congrats. Uh, not bad at all. It's fast, has an excellent display, has good reception. Audio is very good, but cameras are not on par with my 11 Pro Max and Pixel 4. Yeah, I that's not a surprise for me at all. Um, but I'm glad everything else is is doing well on it. I mean... Everything you've everything you've said on here is exactly how I felt about the phone without even owning it. But I, I guess that's not a surprise. That's something that I think a lot of us expected. I'm sure you expected that as well, Deepak. Um, so the audio, even though it has a mono speaker, it's not bad. Have you have you used it enough where you you're like you know like in bed or on your couch laying down and you know sometimes you rest the phone on your chest or whatever and it kind of blocks it. Like, have you ran into that? Has that been fine? Uh, I guess the, the the other question here is, well, no, you just received it today. Um, you're gonna have to let me know if you end up keeping that phone or if you end up returning it within that 30 day time frame. Cause I know you had, I know you were questioning it. And I also know that you were wondering if it was gonna be worth it for you um, in the long run. So keep us posted, Deepak. Congratulations though for getting it. So, uh, okay. Let me see here. Um, yeah, Big House is saying 8 to 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, Swanye says, let's hope that battery doesn't pull a Samsung and blow up. I mean, that that's something that's uh, that's something that I've been wondering about as well. Um, kind of, I, I, I think I would have to have the phone to really see how a battery holds up like that after a long period of time. With my Huawei P40... <clears throat> excuse me, with my Huawei P40 Pro Plus, I'm wondering how many cycles it's going to take before that 40 watt wired. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, no, I'm good. I promise. <laughs> I wonder how that 40 watt wired charging is going to take effect on the battery after a period of time. But the, the one thing that I keep pointing out as well, though, is I'm not charging my Huawei P40 Pro Plus every day. I charge it every three days at this point. That's how I use my battery. I get between like six and a half to seven and a half hours of screen on time, which is great. So I'm not charging the phone as often as I do my Pixel 4 or my iPhone 11 Pro. Well, I charge my iPhone 11 Pro every maybe about a day and a half, something like that. So uh, Juan says, kind of a bummer to see USB 2 listed. It's not a huge deal, but USB 3 brings a lot of perks. Uh, is that for the um, the Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra? I'm assuming so. Um, and you know what? I So like I haven't done enough testing really when it comes to I mean, you're, you're right though. Uh, you still want the best of the best. I'm sure it's, it's a way to save some money and maybe that's where they decided to take a shortcut or at least in terms of saving, saving a couple bucks. Um, but yeah, for sure. Uh, definitely would have, would have been better to have, to have, uh, the higher end on there. Swanee says, meh, I'll deal with a teardrop before the hole punch any day. There you go. CH gadgets. Welcome to the stream. Nice to see you. They do anything, uh, to save a buck. Yeah. I've, 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 I, I don't know how many times I've gone over a lot of that stuff. <laughs> Fear the Roof 42 is in here. I'm here. Who gives a shit? I know, but here I am. I give a shit. Welcome, Fear the Roof 42. Always nice to see you. Welcome, welcome. Uh, T develops. Hey, what's going on, man? How you doing? Um, I don't think I've seen you in here before. Hello. Any thoughts on the Note 20? I've had, I've had a good amount of thoughts on the Note 20. <laughs> Uh, T develops. You can you can see my other uh, streams where I did talk about the Note 20 and the Note 20 Ultra. I uh, I had a few gripes on it, but uh, I think at least in terms of the Note 20. So I don't know if you're talking about the Note 20 or the Note 20 Ultra. I'm assuming the Note 20. But when it comes to the Note 20, for me, a thousand dollars for a phone that kind of is lacking the premium build quality is really questionable. I don't know if it's worth a thousand bucks, but I'm glad to see that, or at least I'm assuming that the Note 20 has fixed many of the camera issues that were plaguing the S20 Ultra, or at least on the at least on the Note 20 Ultra. Is it is it worth the price point? I I don't think so, and I only say that because I know Samsung usually usually has really good deals when it comes to phones. If you wait a week, probably longer than a week, but if you wait a little bit, so uh, I think the Note 20. Maybe the Note the the Note 20 Ultra is probably the better buy just because of the updated specs on it or upgraded specs on it. 
but uh, I would wait to see if you can get that Note 20 Ultra for under a thousand bucks, which I think might be easily doable. Um, but if you have questions, T develops, ask specifically, because I'm not sure what you're thinking when it comes in terms of the phone. But I think overall it has solid specs. The Note 20 Ultra has solid specs. I just don't agree with that pricing only because I know you can get that phone for cheaper with all the promotions and stuff that Samsung has. Um, but if you're like me though, I'm going to put this out there. The one thing that bothers me about Samsung is the, the software experience. I know that Samsung one UI is a lot better than where it used to be. Um, I just, I, I prefer stock Android, but that's just me. I also am really weird about things like, <laughs> like the emoji on Samsung. I, I don't like Samsung's emoji and I know that might be a small thing to nitpick, but that's a personal thing for me. I would rather stick with the, the stock emoji from Android and you can get that with OnePlus that comes with Huawei. Uh, but yeah, that's me. I, I, some people don't care. Uh, for me, that's kind of a weird thing. And I don't know, maybe that's something that you can fix with root, but I haven't messed with anything like that in a while. So I don't know. Um, Okay, uh, CH Gadget says the K30 is ultra now. Yeah, the ultra is now the, yeah, like, like everyone's saying, the ultra is the new pro. Um, okay, Big House says Xiaomi does a great job with updates. My Xiaomi Mi Max 3 just got Android 10 and it was released in July 2018. That's great, good to know. Deepak says, yeah, Jerome, I compared the audio in mono with my iPhone 11 Pro Max and Pixel 4. You can feel the lack of stereo, stereo separation, but quality is really good from the mono speaker. So that's kind of how I feel about it with my uh, Huawei P40 Pro Plus. Unfortunately, even though I paid $1,300 for that phone, it only comes with a mono speaker but it isn't bad. It's loud and it does, it does the job. I just, the stereo speaker is sorely missed. It's, it's funny because I could easily say the biggest con of the, or the my Huawei P40 Pro Plus is the lack of Google software, the price. But for me, I feel like the biggest gripe on my Huawei P40 Pro Plus is the not having a stereo speaker. Uh, okay. Um, oh, God, I keep losing my spot here. Sorry, guys. Uh, let me scroll down. Uh, Swanye says, got to dip. Peace, y'all, and stay safe out there. Swanye, uh, appreciate you stopping by. Always nice to see another Chicago one in here. Um, I'll see you soon, man. Take it easy. Take it easy. Uh, Deepak says, low light performance is better on the Nord compared to the OnePlus 8. Front cameras are also better in sharpness. Wow. That's a, wow. <laughs> I, I just feel like that's such a gut punch to the OnePlus 8. Um, and, and I don't think you're the first to spot that either, right? I, I am pretty sure other people have noted that the cameras on the OnePlus Nord are either very similar to the OnePlus 8 or edge it out or maybe just a little under average or under under the quality of the eight, but wow. Um, crazy, crazy. Juan says, S20 Ultra value plummeted. Samsung offering 650 for a trade-in on the Note 20. That's, that's yeah, so there you go, T Develop. So like, if you're looking for a deal, like really uh, do your homework, do a little research and see what you can get because I'm sure you can get a great deal out of it, um, especially if you, that's why I had a whole video that, I just said people who bought an S20 Ultra, Samsung should have just gave them a Note 20 Ultra for free. Should have just traded in. It's like, if you have an S20 Ultra, just just give it to us and we'll give you a Note 20 Ultra because because our bad, we messed up for you. <laughs> here's a Note 20 Ultra. Here's what, here's what the S20 Ultra really should have been. <laughs> uh, CH Gadget says, Samsung always gives themselves wiggle room for discount with their launch price. They, they really do. Uh, T Develop says, yeah, I truly agree with you. I also enjoy the stock Android experience. Saw a link from Team Verai, so this is my first time here. Well, thank you, T Develops. Um, Team Verai, thank you for the shout out, man. Appreciate that. Thank you for the love. Um, yeah, Team Verai says, uh, I'm a fan of stock as well. I mean, I can use One UI, but stock will always have a special place in my heart. I agree. I'm the same way. Uh, Ruben says, what's up, Juan Wagnell? I personally was hoping Google would still go with the Snap 865 on the Pixel 5 and still charge a lower price with good specs like Xiaomi is doing here. And yeah, that's... So that is... <laughs> I tried, I tried today to not, um, 
I tried to not talk about the pixel today, but uh, I have at least one story and that's exactly what it is. It's about um, the performance and whatever on it. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll We'll touch on it for for a little bit, and then uh, we'll we'll move on. So let me see here. Uh, I think we're good. I think we're good <laughs> in terms of uh, uh, chat. So before I move on to the next story, let me real quick uh, for everyone who's watching, please um, hit that like button. This is my cheesy marketing gimmick right here. Um, hitting that like button, I think, helps with the algorithm. It's just a way to support as well. So if you can hit that like button, I do appreciate it. Um, it is a just a way to support. Also, I do stream weekdays at 2 p.m. Central. So if you're not a subscriber, I don't know what you're waiting for. I think the most obvious thing to do here is to hit that subscribe button because if you are looking for the best YouTuber in the world, you're, you're looking at him right here. I'm kidding. Uh, and so again, uh, hitting that sub button is just a way to support and I do appreciate it. Also, if you are in chat and you notice people with green in their name and a red Chicago star next to their name, that's because they are part of the phone Jerome fam and you could be one too for as little as 99 cents a month. All you got to do is all you got to do is hit that join button. You get the red Chicago star next to your name. You'll get to use custom emoji and you'll get your name in every single one of my intros and outros of my live streams. Also, FYI, I'm kind of out of date with that. I need to update that. I'll do that today. Um, otherwise, uh, if you can't find that blue join button, you can go to youtube.com forward slash phone Jerome forward slash join. I also understand that times are tough for people. So I know if you can't do that, that's totally understandable. Um, so for you guys to just be in here and talk and chat and hit the like button and subscribe, um, I do appreciate that regardless. So thank you guys for all the support either way. Um, it's much appreciated. So let's go ahead and let's go on with the stories here. Um, oh, there we go. This is something I wanted to talk about. I have this article here from Android Authority and it's talking about how Huawei thinks the all screen fingerprint unlock is the future. I, I don't know if it's the future, but it's something that would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> especially today in times of like me wearing a mask anytime I walk outside, especially being back in the city and, you know, I don't have a car. I just walk or ride my bike or, well, I don't even take the bus or the train right now because I just would rather not do that. Uh, and plus it's summer. So I'll take advantage of the nice weather and exercise, but, um, it's hard carrying around my iPhone 11 pro because of the, uh, because of face ID actually Brian, who I know is working right now. So he's probably not in here, but Brian, um, sent me an article about how people in New York, right? MTA is New York, right? The L is here in Chicago, but, uh, people in New York who have iPhones, I think there was an article he sent me where people were pulling their face mask down because they're too lazy to put their pin in. And they would rather pull their face mask down in the train to unlock their phone than um, put their pin in. And in a way I can understand, but at the same time, I'm like, what are you doing? Don't do that, just put your pin. This is where a fingerprint reader would completely solve that issue. This is why I sorely miss the, the fingerprint reader on my Pixel 4 something I've touted for a long time. The, the Pixel 3 fingerprint reader was one of my favorites. The fact that it's a rear fingerprint reader, the fact that I can use it to swipe up and down uh, for notifications. Uh, but this is something that I would love to see. Huawei implementing an all screen fingerprint uh, reader on their phones. I would love to see that. Definitely would love to see that. Um, I haven't read this article yet, so I don't know when this is going to happen, if it's going to happen, but uh, Huawei filed a patent for all screen fingerprint unlock technology. Uh, the firm also outlined how it would work and possible use cases. Vivo previously demonstrated a concept phone with the tech last year, though. I didn't know that. I had no idea Vivo was working on this, but um, where is it? Why, why do we not have this yet? Uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, hasn't Samsung had an issue with their in, in screen in screen fingerprint reader? I think everywhere I read, or at least even in chat, people talk about how the fingerprint reader on Samsung phones, I don't know if I want to say they're a mess. I had the Galaxy A71 with an in screen fingerprint reader and it wasn't bad. It wasn't the best, but I would sometimes have accuracy issues and maybe it's something that they could work on or at least having a bigger 
um, what is it called? A bigger footprint. It's just funny to say a bigger footprint when we're talking about fingerprint, but a bigger footprint to put your thumb on or finger or whatever. I, I don't know if this technology is completely mature yet. I know people have said that on the newer OnePlus phones, the fingerprint reader, the in-screen fingerprint readers are really good. I don't know if anyone has any idea in chat how the fingerprint reader is in terms of Samsung versus OnePlus. Is it worlds better? Is it to the point where it's that good? Where like you don't even think about it anymore? That it's close to like 100% accurate? I'm, I'm asking because I, I need to know. So please, whatever, whatever, um, whatever, what am I thinking of? <laughs> Whatever feedback you have, please share with me. So all screen fingerprint unlock tech is perhaps the holy grail for biometric authentication right now, allowing you to tap anywhere on the display to unlock the phone. Now, Huawei has confirmed to Android Authority that it's filed a patent for the tech in six markets, China, Europe, the US, Japan, Korea, and India, and that it's pending approval. The Chinese brand also outlined a few potential use cases for the technology, such as requiring fingerprint verification for individual app icons, uh, phone gallery. Wait, what, 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 what outlined a few potential use cases for the technology such as requiring. Oh, okay. So you need fingerprint verification for individual apps. This idea isn't new as we've seen OEMs offer app lock functionality for a while now, but it does mean you can theoretically unlock and launch the app in one go rather than tapping the icon and then tapping your existing in display fingerprint sensor or traditional physical scanner. That's cool. Huawei also mentions the ability to quickly enter the SMS app to view and respond to text without having to unlock the phone first. This could therefore make lock screen interactions far more streamlined as merely tapping a lock screen widget or notification could theoretically unlock the device right away. That's that's actually really helpful. Um, that would be better than, I mean, that would be obviously more efficient than face unlock or face ID if there's a specific app that you're looking to open and you can just do that instead. I I still just don't understand why we can't have a phone that has face ID, face unlock, a fingerprint reader. <laughs> what they should do, they need to have a phone that has face unlock and all screen in the front fingerprint uh, in display fingerprint reader and then have one in the back as well. So I can swipe up and down on my notifications. I still think that that techno, I still think that that technology having the, the swipe down and swipe up feature on the rear fingerprint reader is really helpful. And I'm not just talking about swipe down and swipe up for notifications. I think they can make more use cases for that. They can, if, if they're talking about doing all of this on the, 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 the front, to unlock the phone and use widgets to like open specific apps, I think there is a use case for using swipe up and swipe down on the back. I mean, you know, there's already what 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 is what is that going? What are they calling it? When you can tap the back of the phone, you can do it on Apple now with iOS, uh, with the new beta or whatever, and uh, with Android. I don't know if that's something they're going to end up using or implementing, but. I just, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things you can do and why not? Why can't we do it? Money. That's why. That's what it is. It's money. They're not doing it because they can't afford to put all that in there. I guess the more you put in there, the more stuff that can break as well. But I, I don't, I'm an optimist. We should have all these things and they should never break and they should cost decently and a win for the consumer all day, every day. That's, that's, that's where I stand. Um, the manufacturer adds that users will have the freedom to activate sensors in a chosen area on the screen while deactivating the rest on the screen space in order to reduce power consumption. This sounds like you might be able to this sounds like you might be able to disable the sensors in the top third of the screen if you only tend to use the bottom third and middle for authentication for instance. Well, okay, I I see where this is going. I didn't realize it it sucked up battery if you just allowed it to have sensors all over the screen. Biometrics firm Synaptics reckoned back in 2018 that we'd eventually see all screen fingerprint unlock enable a state of continuous authentication. That is the pro 
That is, the phone is constantly checking to make sure it's your finger it's your fingerprint as you use it. There's no word if this is the route Huawei plans to take too, but it would be a great boost for security if it worked well. We've asked Huawei about commercial availability, costs associated with all screen fingerprint unlock, and who it's working with. Um, we'll update the article if or when they get back to us. This wouldn't be the first time we see this tech touted by a brand though, as the Vivo Apex 2019 concept phone had all screen fingerprint unlock too. Uh, so you think, so you have to think that any patent filing for the tech by Huawei would face some resistance. Nevertheless, it certainly seems like this is the way forward for biometric authentication. And why not? It should be. Um, unless battery life is, is the real issue. <laughs> if battery life is the real issue, then yeah, then maybe, maybe we have uh, more to talk about, but uh, I, I still want to see the tech. Um, why not? Why not? All right, let me get back into chat here. I, I know that a lot of stuff is happening in chat, so I'm so sorry. I know I'm not going to get through everything. Um, I just want to say hi to people that I haven't seen with uh, everyone. I just want to say hi to people that I haven't said hi to yet. Uh, Keystone Tech is in here. Yo, what up, Keystone Tech? What's going on, man? It's been a hot minute. I haven't seen you in a while. How's it going? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. Arvils is in here. Corsox. Arvils, hit that like button. Thank you for the support, man. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Oh, Jesus. Here we go. Uh, I got, what is this? Tana is in here with a $10 super chat. Tana, thank you so much, man. Thank you for that support. Um, man, I appreciate that. You, you, you've been supporting pretty regularly as well. Uh, you're also a member. Uh, Tana, thank you so much. Tana was on my stream not too long ago. If you guys missed that, uh, he was on with, uh, Android stud and, uh, Android stud had the pixel 4a that, uh, he unboxed for me. You know, what was so nice was, uh, and Tana was there to also provide feedback. But, uh, I, I love that Leo came on and he unboxed the, the pixel 4a on my channel because, uh, Google refuses to give me any phones for free anymore <laughs> because I don't know why I always say it's because I'm very critical when it comes to phones. But, uh, Tana, thank you so much, man. What up J boogie hashtag team pixel hashtag 4a, uh, for life. I'm, I'm assuming. Tana, thank you, man. Thank you for that support. Appreciate it so much. Um, welcome to the stream, by the way. All right, let me let me scroll back up here. Uh, okay. Um, what am I missing? Ted says, what depreciates worse, a car or a phone? Car is at least a car will wait when you drive it off the lot before it... <laughs> It's price plummets. There you go. Uh, Michelle uh, Cognolati. Michelle, I don't think I've seen you in here before either. Welcome to the stream. Vivo Concept, anyone? Um, yeah, I guess that's what it is. I don't even remember. I wasn't even I wasn't even um, privy to that concept. But uh, I would love to see an all-screen fingerprint reader for sure. For sure. Um, Deepak says, I went back to a Pixel 3 from the Pixel 4 for the exact same reason. There you go. There you go. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I know there's a lot of chat in here. I, I, you know, you know, guys, I, I typically go through all the chat, but um, lately it's been a lot, and and what's been happening is I end up just talking about one story because then like 40 minutes we're we're in here in chat. Um, okay, Team Vari says we have a Galaxy A30s with a display fingerprint reader, and we almost always do two tries to get past the lock screen. Yeah, that's unfortunate for sure, for sure. Um, Juan says, difference between optical and ultrasonic sensors, more secure in display is slower. There you go. Yeah, I don't even know. I don't even know. So which is the better one? Um, the ultrasonic? Is that what's in? I don't, I, I, I can't keep up. Thank you for, thank you providing, thank you for providing the difference though. I'll have to do some research so I don't sit here looking like an idiot. <laughs> um, Deepak says the fingerprint on the Nord is super fast. Good to know. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Ar Arville says, from my experience, I can suggest the why. Oh, you're talking about the laptop. I see that uh, odd weight was asking. Yeah, for fifteen hundred bucks, I'm I'm the wrong person to ask. I have a 2015 MacBook Pro. I owned a Dell XPS. 13 and a 15, which I thought were good, but those were really pricey as well. Um, Juan says, we had the G8. People made fun of the, quote, air gestures, but ignored the more secure face unlock. There you go, too. I don't even I don't even know anything really about those phones. Uh, Tony, I see Tony in here. Um, Tony says, we need the iris scanner back from Samsung. That's what Brian said, too. Brian talked about the, the iris scanner, and I can't remember why 
they pulled that. What was what was up with the iris scanner? I I can't remember. I can't remember. Uh, Juan says I think LG G8 was still the only phone to give more secure face unlock and a rear fingerprint. I I didn't so I didn't realize it had both. That's awesome actually that it had both. I had no idea. Um, I thought no, I, I didn't realize a company did that. I thought no one did that. Uh, but that's great to know. Uh, Tony says, hello, iPhone Jerome. That's, that's not my name. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tony, Tony, the very, I, I need to, you need to have like Tony hashtag or hashtag quote iPhone Pazo. Um, since Tony is very heavily iPhone lately. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me, let me go down here. Um, Oh my God. Okay, guys, I'm not going to be able to get through everything. Um, so let me see here. Michelle says, glad to be here. Welcome, Michelle. Welcome. Uh, okay, we can move on. We'll move on. I'm, I'm like trying to read. I'm like, okay, I can't put everything up here, but uh, let's let's move on, guys, because th that hour is already um, coming up soon. So uh, my next story here, actually, we're going to talk about deals right now. So this article from CNET, yes, I know, I don't, I don't really pull many articles from CNET, but the uh, $699 OnePlus 7 Pro is on sale for $450 uh, today only. The quote, best Android phone value of 2019 is now one of the best phone deals of 2020. So I want to kind of circle back with this $450 price point because the one thing I talk about a lot on this channel is trying to get the best for your money. And when people ask me about certain phones and what they should buy or whatever, I always suggest to take some time and look at some older phones. And by older, I'm not even talking about like three-year-old phones or four-year-old phones. I'm talking about look at last year's phone. You can still get them brand new. And here is a perfect example. A OnePlus 7 Pro, which has very high-end specs, it, it also has a front selfie pop-up camera, which I'm a big fan of. But... Uh, Otherwise, as far as performance and a very clean version of Android, the OnePlus 7 Pro, I still think is a great phone to have. And at a price of $450 with the specs that it has, we're going to dig into that in a second, I think is a great deal. The one reason I bring this up as well is, what was it? Sometime last week, I talked about comparing the <laughs> what am I thinking about now? The Pixel 4a and uh, the the iPhone SE. And I think the Pixel 4a at a $350 price point is a great, great value. For what it has and what it gives you, $350 for that Pixel 4a, even though I don't have it just yet, I, I, I am pretty sure that's going to be a spectacular phone at the price, a bargain for the price. And when I compared it to the iPhone SE, I was like, well, think about this. If you get an iPhone SE, I mean, yes, you have these other pluses with the iPhone SE. You get the better processor, you get the better chipset, you know, you, you get longer support, you get better like build quality, wireless charging, all that kind of stuff. Those are great things for the iPhone SE for $400. But at $400, you're also only getting 64 gigs of internal storage. So at one point I was saying, well, look, if you want 128 gigs of internal storage, then you're paying $450 for that phone. Do you, do you see where I'm going with this? I'm, I'm, I'm circling this right here. What was, <laughs> some of the, some of the other, some of the other issues with an iPhone SE is the display being a lot smaller, the battery not being the greatest, you know, you have touch ID, which is great, but it's on the front, which kind of obscures the, the front display. So, you, you kind of have to take a balance of what or prioritize what is important to you because you might not care that the display is smaller. You might not care that the fingerprint reader is on the front. You might not care that it's old, an older design, but it's still better quality in terms of build materials and all that kind of stuff. And not to mention the fact that the iPhone SE still has great video when it comes to a phone. I think a lot of people keep forgetting about video quality I think especially today in 2020, a lot of people value not only the, the stills on photos, but also the, the quality of the video, the image stabilization, the video stabilization. Uh, with that being said, though, there's another niche of people that might not care about video quality or wireless charging. 
they, they might care more about a bigger battery and, you know, they, they might just care more about Android and good performance and a clean version of Android. Right. And so this is where a phone like the OnePlus seven pro can be your choice, right? So cheap phones come to those who wait. If you had your eye on last year's OnePlus 7 Pro, but couldn't afford the $700 price tag, your patience just paid off today only. And while, supply, and while supplies last, Woot has the unlocked OnePlus 7 Pro, eight gigs of internal or eight, eight gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of internal storage for $450. That is... I feel like is a great deal, the lowest price on record. The key thing to know, it's compatible only with GSM networks, meaning AT&T, T-Mobile, and their various MVNOs like Cricket, Mint Mobile, and Ting. I went ahead and I pulled up the deal here on Woot, and it is legit. $450 right now for this phone. OnePlus 7 Pro, eight gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of internal storage. So this phone for $450 is for somebody who wants an Android phone with clean, with a clean version of Android, right? Like not heavily bloated, not heavily skinned. For someone that wants a full screen, a pop-up selfie camera, for someone that's looking for a lot of internal storage, this is 256 gigs of internal storage for $450. The, the one thing we're going to talk about here is, yes, the cameras are probably not the best. Let's let's get that out of the way. But other than that, I think it's still a pretty decent phone. I, if, if I'm not mistaken, though, I, I think the display on here curves. So that could be an issue when it comes to accidental touches. So keep that in mind. But still, a $450 price tag, I think, is a good deal. Uh I can't make the decision for you when you buy a phone, but I can at least give you reasons of why this phone might be better than this other phone, or at least put in your head the prioritization of what is important to you. If video quality and camera quality is important to you, then you might want to go here instead. If you're looking for Android or Apple or support or software support for X amount of years down the road, then maybe this other phone is more important. Really, it just, it depends. But why not at least put the options out there so you know what to look for when you're buying a phone? All right, let's go ahead and continue on. I only have two stories left, but I'm just going to close it out with this. I didn't want to talk about the Pixel today. I really didn't. I didn't want to talk about the Pixel because all I've been talking about lately is Pixel, 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 Pixel. But I have this article here from CNET. Wow, I have two CNET articles. Uh, Google's flagship uh, Pixel 5 probably won't get a flagship processor. This, this really isn't a surprise. This is something that like we were hoping that maybe they would change the processor for the Pixel 5, that it wouldn't have the same Snapdragon 765G that's on the Pixel 4a 5G or the upcoming Pixel 4a 5G, but it looks like this is what we're going to be getting. After unveiling the 4a last week, Google's gearing up to launch its uh, Pixel 5 in the fall, but based on circulating rumors, the Pixel 5 may not get the flagship specifications or at least the processor that we've grown accustomed to. The Pixel 5 will feature Qualcomm's mid-range Snapdragon 765G processor, according to a new listing on the AI benchmark benchmark website that has been cited by various publications. That's a step up from the 730G inside the 4A, but it's not as advanced as the Snap 855 chipset in last year's Google in last year's Google Pixel 4, or any of the previous Pixel phones that use Qualcomm's high-end 800 series Snapdragon processors. Um, I don't know if I'm really going to get into all of this, but the one thing I wanted to talk about here, oh, well, so here's, here's another thing too. So in addition to the Snapdragon 765G chipset, the Pixel will get eight gigs of RAM. According to the website, both the Pixel 4 and the 4a come with six gigs of RAM. So you're going to get a boost when it comes to the Pixel 5 in terms of RAM. So eight gigs instead of six gigs, which is great. You'll get an upgrade when it comes to the processor. You know, you'll get a Snapdragon 765G chipset which is also what you're going to get in the Pixel 4 a 5G, which is going to be $500 compared to what might be $700 on the Pixel 5. 
but it won't be as fast as let's say what you have on a Pixel 4 with a Snapdragon 855. So the question that might, some people might have is like, well, why didn't they put if they weren't if they weren't going to put a Snapdragon 865 chipset in the Pixel 5, then why didn't they just put the 855 in there from the Pixel 4? Why is it going to be something less, you know, than the Pixel 4? And the answer to that is 5G. Because 5G is the 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 hot word right now. That's what everyone wants to hear. 5G, 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 even though it probably isn't the, it's still in its beginning stages. It's not where it needs to be. Um, but yeah. Uh, and so the, the compromise here is we're going to give you a 765G. It's not going to be fast as a Pixel 4, but it'll still be good enough for most people, I, I'm guessing. Would I have rather them put an 855 chipset from the Pixel 4? Yeah, definitely. I don't care about 5G right now. It's, it doesn't matter to me. My Huawei P40 Pro Plus gets horrible numbers with 5G. I, I get the same numbers with 5G as I do with 4G right now, except when it comes to upload speeds. That's that's the good thing I'm getting for that. But that's about it. Um, I guess I can't say that's, that's about it because those are still good numbers. But 5G is still not ready at this point, and I feel like we're not... We're, not, we're really not in the need of that big push for 5G at the moment. So uh, that's it. That's all I got for the Pixel 5. I don't want to go into it too much. I've been, I've been so Pixel heavy lately and I just, I'm kind of pixeled out. I mean, really, I'm not. I could talk about the Pixel all day, but I, I feel like I would just be beating a dead horse at this point. So, uh, okay, <laughs> let me go ahead and let me get back into chat here really, really quick. Um, so... Let me just scroll up a little bit here. Uh, Jay Smith is in here. Jay Smith, what's going on? Pardon me, Jerome. Do you have a cup of... Sh uh, this is an inside joke. Um, I, was, uh, I was on a stream yesterday. I was on a live stream yesterday. I was actually at the studio um, with the news organization I was at, and I did a short stream. <laughs> I am not going to get into that, Jay, but Jay, welcome. Appreciate you stopping by. <laughs> Uh, okay, let me scroll down here. Big House says uh, $450 is a great price for a 7 Pro. It really is. I, I When I saw that, I'm like, if I had the money, if I had money to spend right now, I would have bought that phone. 256 gigs of internal storage, a pop-up selfie cam, clean Android, an all-screen display. That's a great deal. That really is a great deal. Um, Tana So Lit says, exactly. And uh, plus, OnePlus is getting a major UI update that looks absolutely lit. There you go. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Ar Arville says, I hope you will get the Note 20 Ultra. You know what, Arville's, I, I, would, I wouldn't mind that phone. I would actually love to test that camera out versus my um, Huawei P40 Pro Plus. But I, unless that phone drops to a good deal, I can't see myself getting it. Um, also, I don't have a ton of money. I'm, you know, I'm I'm on a limited budget. I just moved, you know, to a new apartment and I'm just trying to get by. But if if I can, I'll definitely look out for it. Look out for it. Um, Keystone Tech says, I never got a OnePlus. Never? Really? Maybe this is your time, Keystone. <laughs> uh oh, okay. Keystone says, I'm focused on 2020 devices. That's it. I don't, I don't blame you, man. I mean, you know, do you, do you? Uh starting says $350 US is a bargain. That one plus seven pro price is a steal. Definitely is a steal. Starting, did I say hi? Were you did, did did I don't know if I did? Um, I think I did. Anyway, welcome. If I didn't. Uh okay. Uh, so let me see here. Uh, Arville says 2021 will never come. Uh, Keystone says OnePlus don't sell in Philly cause, uh, nobody buys them. I mean, just, you don't order them online Keystone. Where are you getting your phones at? Uh, now that's the one I want. <laughs> Wait, so you think you might go? I, I, I don't know where your head's at right now. Um, Keystone says Pixel 5. I'm upgrading all my Google Fi devices along with my Moto G stylus. There you go. There you go. Big House says OnePlus isn't for the average consumer. Uh, yeah, I can agree with you on that. OnePlus is a phone for tech nerds. It is a phone, though, that I have recommended to many people. So back in the day, people would ask me, like, I, so I think people's, uh, 
I think people's priorities have changed over time. I had a lot of friends back then who didn't care about the camera. So when people, the very first thing, the very first thought that came to my mind when people told me they didn't, that camera wasn't their top priority, I automatically, in my head, I was like one plus, one plus. Because most people who didn't care about the camera cared more about gaming and performance and battery, which is, I feel like, my friends who still care about that still care about that. But at the same time, now they care about a better camera. And so it's, it's harder for me to recommend a one plus today also because it's just so much more expensive than it used to be for sure. Um, Stardy says now the quote for a five G is going to be that magical unicorn. No one knew they actually wanted, especially if it comes with that extra camera. That that's true. I, I still think, I don't, I don't know if the Pixel 5 is going to come with a better camera than the 4A 5G. That, that, is, uh, that is the thing that scares me the most because I don't think a Pixel 5 is worth it. If you, I don't think a Pixel 5 is worth $700 even if you upgrade the display and give it IP68 dust and water resistance and give it wireless charging and uh, upgrade the build quality you know, the materials, I don't think that Pixel 5 will be worth $700 if those are the only upgrades and you don't upgrade the camera. If the camera is going to be the same camera as the 4A 5G at 500 bucks, I would just tell people to buy the 4A 5G. Unless you really prioritized a higher refresh rate, unless you absolutely needed IP68 dust and water resistance, then I don't understand spending the extra 200 bucks. And here I go again, talking about the Pixel phone. <laughs> I'm not, I don't, I don't feel like, yeah, I'm not going to get it. Uh, okay. Um, starting says you should really commit to your channel name and call it phone Jerome, not just Jerome unbox therapy. Isn't Lou, although he does, although he does have Lou later. I know, you know what's starting. I, um, I've thought about this. This has gone back and forth for a while. Uh, when I first started this channel, it was just Jerome Ortega. And then, um, and then I just, switched it to Jerome. And then at one point I thought about doing phone Jerome. And I, I, I think I might do that. It, it, that actually has come to my head. Uh, but I also have other people who have come to me about this. And, and so like, I know a lot of people come to me too, because they like to see my other stuff. They, they want me to start incorporating vlogs and all this other stuff. And they're, they, they just, I don't know. I, I also have a fasting channel and that one is called finally fasting. So that with that specific name, but, but I also want to talk more than just phones. But I, I, yeah, it is a good point. And, and that might happen. I just don't know when that would happen. Um, but I like that idea too. It's not a bad idea. I do, I do promote phone Jerome more than, I don't, I don't really say Jerome Ortega for anything anymore, except for TNT Joe Fi, because that was what I started this at years ago. And that will always stay TNT Joe Fi. But yeah, um, sorry, off topic there. Uh, <laughs> Big House says the 4A has you burnt out. A little bit, a little bit. Tana so lit. Hashtag Team Pixel. Hashtag yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, it is. Yes, sir. There you go. Uh, Keystone Tech says facts, Jerome. Yep, for sure. Uh, okay, let me uh, scroll down here. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything else. Uh, X Wolverine Z. I've never had, I don't think I've seen you in here before. Better camera and uh, battery life. Are you talking about the Pixel 5? Um, I would love to see that as well. Uh, but yes, better, better camera. Okay, so actually, you know what? These are both of these things. Both of these things I would love more than anything else. Better camera and better battery life for the 5, for sure. <laughs> Ruben says, <laughs> maybe a Pixel 5 Ultra. Maybe, maybe that's what that's going to, maybe there's going to be no more Pixel 5 XL guys. It's going to be a Pixel 5 Ultra. <laughs> um, D Fox says, is 5G worth 150 bucks extra? No, no, it isn't. They really isn't, or it really isn't. Marcus A says, they should put their energy into the Pixel 6. Also, do you still have the phone Jerome stickers? Uh, Marcus A, I do. Actually, I was going to go grab them and show you. Where's my... Actually, let me, let me grab my helmet. Give me. I should I should ask you guys. Uh, are would any of you guys be interested in this phone Jerome sticker? I don't know if you've ever. The light is really bright there, but these these are like real high quality stickers, and I have them. So this has a red bottom brim to it, but uh, I have it with the green, and you'll see it has. 
God, why is this the focus is not autofocusing, but uh, it has the red Chicago star and whatever. Um, but I do have stickers. I have a bunch of them. And I always thought about like selling them or whatever. I used to give them to um, my patrons if they hit a certain tier. But like, if you guys are interested in those stickers, I have them on everything. And they're like real high quality. They're not like cheapo stickers. They, they kind of stick on everything. But if you guys are interested, let me know. Um, maybe I can try to give some out, especially if you're not too far away and it doesn't cost too much. Um, or if you guys want to, you know, like throw a couple bucks to help for shipping, that that's fine too. Uh, but Marcus, thanks for asking. Um, why is in here? Oh, wait, there's a $5 super chat from Big House. Great seeing Xiaomi get some love on the channel today, Jerome. No problem, Big House. I the one thing that I need to uh the one thing that I need to do is start talking about just other phones in general and like spending some time and learning about that kind of stuff. So, um, but big house, thank you for the five dollar super chat. Thank you for the love. Uh, thank you for the support. It means a lot to me, man. Uh Always does, always does. You're a regular supporter and I, I appreciate that. Uh, Tana says, I'll buy some stickers. Tana, no, man, you know what? Like, come, I mean, you you just, you just, you just super chatted 10 bucks. Tana, let's let's go grab a beer. Like, it's, it's, it's a shame that we're Chicagoans and like we haven't even met up yet. Let's let's go hang out. We, I'll, I'll touch base with you. I got some stickers with your name on it, Tana, for sure. Um, yeah, hashtag merch for sure. <laughs> Thanks, Tana. Uh, appreciate it. Um, why did I say hi and bye? Hi, why? Bye, why? Thank you for coming on. You missed the stream today. I'm sure you could check it on replay. Um, Fear the Root 42 says channel name. There's no place like home, Jerome. There you go. <laughs> Uh, Tony says, I take one. Tony, what's going on? Hi, how's it going, man? Um, Keystone Tech says, yes. All right, guys, let me know. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'll put something up as far as merch and as far as stickers and stuff. Cause they're, they're, they're real, they're real, uh, high end ones. Um, Tana says, okay, bet. Bet, for sure, for sure. Uh, Ruben says the same stickers, merch. Yeah. All right, guys, for sure. Uh, I'll, I'll put something out for that. Uh, starting says, by the way, I dipped in late. That's why you didn't see me. It's all good, man. Uh, Bakhar uh, Nabi, I don't know who this is, dropped a new exercise video, so I had to watch. Uh, do I have to, <laughs> with that emoji, I, I can only imagine what you're talking about here. I'm about to, okay. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know who that is and uh, what that's about. I. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, starting. Appreciate it. Uh, Marcus A. Or Ortega Tech. I'm not. I'm not too keen on Ortega. I, I rather stick with Phone Jerome um, or just do Jerome Ortega in general. Leo. Leo's in here. Android stud. What up, Jelly Bean? Watching on my Pixel 4a and Galaxy Buds live. You got Galaxy Buds? Um, I want Galaxy Buds. How do you like them? Actually, no. Leo doesn't have AirPods Pro. Leo, I need to ask you. Let me know before I close this out. Those Galaxy Buds Live, how do you like them? Did you just get them or have you had them for a bit? I just want to know what your um, thoughts are on that because I was thinking about getting them because I actually like the design on them. I think they look pretty cool. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm wondering how they are. Uh, oh, you just got them. Okay. You know what? If you made a video on them, I'll, I'll just look for it. So, cause I, I'd love to know how they, how they fit and how they perform, and if they're actually worth the money. Uh, Team Verai says, phone Jerome for the win. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Team Verai. <laughs> Very comfortable. Great, great. Um, how am I going to pronounce this? Uh, Pervarajasin? Perva Gohil? Pervaraj ah, I'm so sorry. Please help me pronounce it. But yo, what's going on? Hey, man, you good? Yeah, I am good. I'm good. And actually... That's going to be it for today, guys. Guys, I do want to thank everybody today for joining me on TNT JoFi. I want to thank you guys so much for uh, spending some time today, checking out the stream for everybody who's liked and subscribed and, uh, you know, commented, you know, in, uh, participated in the chat. I do appreciate it. I want to thank everybody who's super chatted today, who showed some extra love and support. Thank you guys so much. Uh, it, it, it does mean a lot to me. I know I thank people all the time, but really um, your support helps continue do what I do. It helps offset costs and it really, you know, 
I, I appreciate it so much. So thank you guys so much to all my patrons, my Patreons, my YouTube members for being part of the phone, Jerome fam. Thank you guys again. Um, come back tomorrow, 2 PM central. We're going to do it all over again. We'll have more tech to talk about. I have laundry in the washer downstairs right now. Hopefully nobody's messed with it. And it's probably been sitting there for 45 minutes. So I got to go get that. Um, so I'm out of here. I'm going to start waving by as I hit the play button and transition out. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow. Take it easy, guys. See you later. Bye. I'm <laughs> sorry.